Shalom. We're continuing to investigate the gospel according to John, looking at the Hebraic background of the book. We are in chapter 17. These words spoke Yeshua and lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour is come. Glorify your son, that your son may also glorify you, as you have given him power over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as you have given him. And this is eternal life, that they might know you, the only true God, and Yeshua the Messiah, whom you have sent. I have glorified you on the earth, I have finished the work which you gave me to do. And now, O Father, glorify me with your own self, with the glory which I had with you before the world was. The concept of an eternal life and resurrection of the dead is barely documented anywhere in Tanakh. We have these few verses. Daniel 12.2 And many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life and some to shame and everlasting contempt. Isaiah 26.19 Your dead men shall live together with my dead body, they shall arise. Awake and sing, you that dwell in dust, for your dew is as the dew of herbs, and the earth shall cast out the dead. Deuteronomy 32:39. See now that I, even I, am he, and there is no God with me. I kill and I make alive, I wound and I heal, neither is there any can deliver out of my hand. And also Ezekiel 37. Then he said unto me, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel, Behold, they say, our bones are dried, and our hope is lost. We are cut off for our parts. Therefore prophesy and say unto them, Thus says the Lord Jehovah, Behold, O my people, I will open your graves, and cause you to come up out of your graves, and bring you into the land of Israel. And you shall know that I am Jehovah, when I have opened your graves, O my people, and brought you up out of your graves." The fulfillment of this is very often taken as the result of the Holocaust. The development of the theology of resurrection of the dead and a, an eternal life to come developed in the intertestamental period. There is some writing in the Talmud about it. All of the Jewish people, even sinners and those who are liable to be executed with a court-imposed death penalty, have a share in the world to come, as it is stated. And your people also shall be righteous. They shall inherit the land forever, the branch of my planting, the work of my hands, for my name to be glorified, which is in Isaiah 60, verse 21. And these are the exceptions, the people who have no share in the world to come, even when they have fulfilled many mitzvot, any, many commandments. One who says, there is no resurrection of the dead derived from the Torah, which we have just seen that there is, and one who says the Torah did not originate from heaven, and an epikoros, this is the word that is used to describe secular people, it is where our word epicurean comes from, who treats Torah scholars and the Torah that they teach with contempt. Rabbi Akiva says, also included in the exceptions, are one who reads external literature, non-biblical literature. What is considered external literature is what is not Torah and not rabbinic writings. Anything outside of that is considered external literature. And one who whispers invocations over a wound and says in an invocation for healing, every illness that I placed upon Egypt, I will not place upon you for I am Yehovah, your healer. So a person that uses that as a charm, as a magic incantation, this person will also be excluded from the world to come. By doing so, he shows contempt for the sanctity of the name of God and therefore has no share in the world to come. Abba Shaul, this is not Paul from the New Testament, this is a rabbi from a long time ago, also included in the exceptions is one who pronounces the ineffable name of God as it is written with its letters. And this is one of the accusations that the rabbis brought against Yeshua that he actually pronounced the name of God. And so we see in the New Testament that there was an argument about whether there would be a resurrection or not. And this argument is documented in Acts 23. And when he had said so, there arose a dissension between the Pharisees and the Sadducees, and the multitude was divided. 
For the Sadducees say there is no resurrection, neither angel nor spirit, but the Pharisees confess both. So the theology was in the process of development. Continuing in John 17, verse 6, I have manifested your name unto the men which you gave me out of the world, yours they were, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they have known that all things whatsoever you have given me are of you. For I have given unto them the word which you gave me, and they have received them, and have known surely that I came out from you, and they have believed that you did send me. I pray for them. I pray not for the world, but for them which you have given me, for they are yours. And all mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I am glorified in them. And now I am no more in the world, but these are in the world, and I come to you. Holy Father, keep through your own name those whom you have given me, that they may be one, as we are one. While I was with them in the world, I kept them in your name. Those that you have given me I have kept, and none of them is lost but the son of perdition, that the scripture might be fulfilled. And now come I to you, and these things I speak in the world, that they might have my joy fulfilled in themselves. I have given them your word, and the word, and the world has hated them, because they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. I do not pray that you should take them out of the world, but that you should keep them from the evil. They are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Sanctify them through your truth. Your word is truth. I mentioned this earlier. Where is the scripture that was fulfilled by Judas betraying Yeshua? Possibly Psalm 41, 9. Yea, mine own familiar friend, in whom I trusted, which did eat of my bread, has lifted up his heel against me. And maybe Psalm 55. For it was not an enemy that reproached me. Then I could have borne it. Neither was it he that hated me, that did magnify himself against me. Then I would have hid myself from him. But it was you, a man mine equal, my guide, mine acquaintance. We took sweet counsel together and walked unto the house of God in company. And we are reminded about the word of Jehovah. From Psalm 119, verse 142, Your righteousness is an everlasting righteousness, and your law, your Torah, is the truth. From verse 151, You are near, Jehovah, and all your commandments are truth. Continuing in verse 18, As you have sent me into the world, even so have I also sent them into the world. And for their sakes I sanctify myself, that they also might be sanctified through the truth. Neither pray I for these alone, but for them also which shall believe on me through their word, that they all may be one, as you, Father, are in me, and I in you, that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that you have sent me, and the glory which you gave me I have given them, that they may be one even as we are one, I in them and you in me, that they may be made perfect in one, and that the world may know that you have sent me and has loved me as you have loved me. Father, I will that they also, whom you have given me, be with me where I am. That they may behold my glory, which you have given me, for you loved me before the foundation of the world. O righteous Father, the world has not known you, but I have known you. And these have come that you have sent me. And I have declared unto them your name, and will declare it that the love wherewith you have loved me may be in them, and I in them. Until next time, Tasimita inayim al keep your eye on the sky, your redemption draweth nigh. Shalom.